Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to look at a set of Master Clip Hunter horse clippers. I'm Simon and welcome to Oakside Saddlery. Master Clip clippers then. Uh, I like Master Clip, they're nice clippers, nothing wrong with them. I'm quite happy to service Master Clip, I know many companies won't, but I'm quite happy to do them. Uh, they're only just an old model, license built version of something else, I suppose. So generally, they, there's a fault with the switch on these. I can tell that's not doing nothing, so we'll have a look what that is when we get inside. But otherwise, apparently they was all all right. Correct view, so I haven't got to worry about that. I've had a look through the cable previously because there was a lot of it, and there was no damage to that cable. So that's my first sort of part of a, a pat test. They've previously been serviced by another company. So let's have a look at it. Take the blades off first of all then, nice and simple. This is a, a Lister style head. These clippers can come with a Lister or a Heinegger clipper head, either ones. So we have a fair bit of hair jammed in there. We'll give them a bit of a clean up. The blades need sharpening as well, so I should get them done at the same time. Just tie them together. We've got two Phillips screws in there. A bit of hair and a bit of muck inside that, but nothing too bad. One screw out. Oh. Why not? Up. Next one's free. So this just pull off here. There we go. Oh, a little bit of hair in there. Let's get that screw before it disappears. Just a little bit of hair in here. So this one, this one vents through the blades, so it draws the head air in through that filter through the motor through the front through here and out through there onto the blades which means it can get a bit of hair in there so we can clean that all up so, if it, so that feels a little bit rough that might be the hair that's in there might be the hair i should get a bit of oil in there when we clean that up clean that good clean off now one of the things you have to remember with these the two screws in there are actually just a square nut that sits in there if I remember on these and they are likely to fall out when you take them off but otherwise we've got five screws there all Phillips so first one it's free just doesn't want to come out come on to some others got my electric one out it'd been a bit quicker but it doesn't necessarily get in down through them holes sun's out of date bit of snow on the ground yesterday but today's pretty good going feel free just get the kettle on or something Three, one, two, three, it's missing, four, let's do this last one on the other back here that won't come out. Quite don't want to come out of there. So we should, we can just see that starting to ease apart. It's got a little bit caught on there. I guess she's running me around always on that to slice through there. That's free there. It's sticking at the front a little bit. Almost feels like there's something holding that filter. Don't need that anymore. I'll have this filter as well in a minute. Something's gripping that. Screwdriver in there and pop it open a bit. It's probably them two screws in there at the front that are just pulling it tight together. There we go. So, see what I mean with them squares? Where did that go? With them squares in there, if you're not careful, they pop out and they come with it. So, this is attached to that side. Uh, so, let's just turn that around where the cable's going to want to let it settle. 
that screw still will not come out. It's so annoying. If I don't get it out, it's going to end up falling out. So all I've done is just push that round on the back of it to put a bit of pressure on it because I can't get in there. There it goes. I guarantee it will fall out as soon as I've put the airline on it. So, that sounds good. As though it works, which makes me think it's this side then that's not working. So either had something fall off of it or it's just worn. Anyway, let's have a look at these. So we have a couple of brushes. This all looks pretty good. It's a fan. And then we've got the switch here. This would be a condenser of some sorts. Wiring's just directly soldered in, which is unusual. Normally there's a screw fitting in there, which is a bit annoying because it means I can't take this off. A little simple circuit board. We can see the wires that run through to the motor and quite a nice motor in there. So again, that feels quite tight. That might be just where something's a bit loose, but it feels quite tight to me. We'll have a look at that and we'll have another clean up with it. So let's get all these apart. These are probably all going to be tied together. Just look in there, see where... See there where there's a rubber O-ring. So that O-ring is like a, a dust seal or a vibration seal. If you look on the back, it appears there isn't one there. When in fact there is, it's jammed in there, look. And it's been trapped. So again, that's one either... When that was last serviced, they trapped it, or from manufacturer and it hasn't been taken apart properly last time. So that may have jammed into there and caused a few problems. I've got some of them, we'll replace that. Put another one in there. But yeah, I'm not sure if you can see that. Where was I on that camera then, anyway? Not sure if you can see that. So there's that O-ring, see where it's been squashed? Just needs that, that'll need replacing and sorting out. Again. The switch itself sounds like it's all right. It didn't sound all right when it was in it, but we'll have a look at that when we come to putting it together. So let's get the rest of this apart. This is all attached together and going to be attached to that circuit board. So the first thing we're going to take out now is these two screws from here. Again, cut the Phillips. So hopefully they're all the same sizes. That was quite tight. One from this side. off there so that's going to come out this is part of that that's all soldered together let's have a quick look at these brushes because these normally go ping otherwise so again all i'm going to do is make sure that brush stays in there and just ease it up and then let it out a little bit at a time brush looks good one on the other side that can come back over here but disappears somewhere let's have a little lever in there there it goes so again all i'm going to do is make sure that that brush only comes out when i'm ready for it they have a real habit of just going ping and disappearing off somewhere where I don't want them to go. So circuit board, big condenser on the back of it, a couple of other parts and pieces on it but there's actually not a lot to it. Nicely soldered, condenser looks good, wiring looks good for the brush, motor then. So case in itself, just a little bit of hair, nothing too bad in there, we can clean that out. Gonna have another look at that switch in a minute. So this is that O-ring that was caught. If we look at the state of that, I can see that's quite badly damaged, isn't it really now? So it's not gonna do what it's do, so I'll replace that one. One at the front, that's what it should look like. Let's have a look at the two together. So that's what they should look like. This is what that one looks like. So we'll get that, we'll replace one of them. Strap around the magnetic case and should all come apart. They're all nice and solid. So we'll give that a clean up. That feels good. That bearing feels good. That bearing feels good. So all of that is all pretty much the case it should be. It's just a little bit dirty, a little bit dusty. And we've just got to figure out what's going on with this switch as to why it's not doing it. If we're lucky, it was just something caught up inside there that's just 
cat's pushing it away. I'm not sure. We'll have a look when I get to it. And then I can swear at it later on. So we'll give it a good clean up. Get all this hair out of all these parts. Get the blades sorted. So we've got two sets of blades. Another set over here. So both sets of blades need to go off and be sharpened. Other than that, Master Clip Horse Clippers. So one of my nice favourite ones. I like the corded, the corded, the battery powered Romas. They are really nice clippers. If you want to get a set of clippers, I don't do recommendations, but that would be a recommendation. Otherwise, I'll try and get this back together. It's going to be either a first part or a second part, and we'll put the second part. I'll be putting it back together. What am I talking about? But never mind. Second part, I'll be putting it back together and hopefully fixing that switch and see what's wrong with it. But otherwise, have a good day, and I'll see you in a bit. Goodbye. So this uh, uh, circuit board then, and the switch. So it sounds like it's working so we just need to test it so all we've got is a little multimeter i'm just going to switch it straight around onto the buzzy one what makes a noise so when i touch them together and get a contact i should have it go so i can see that one runs through and goes to that terminal there and on that one there is probably the other side from it so if i connect from here to here i shouldn't get anything good and if i now press that switch in on the back this is where i need lots of fingers And I can see I've got a contact there. So that switch is fine. Get rid of this again. Set you back up so you can see the rest of it. So I've set this back up. We're going to have another little look at this. So I don't need any of this stuff. All I really want is the empty casing. And we'll have a look of how this all fits together and how it works. So the circuit board sits on this side with that switch sitting up so we're going to push that into there so if we have a look at this we can see there's a little catch there that holds in place there that actually looks like it's a bit worn there which could be the problem and it sits on the back there so that's all we got to do first of all then is fit this back in there so if it's under one side get that out of the way back on the other side so that's where it should sit that feels pretty good and I can see that might be an issue there. So just musing to myself, I just noticed in there that it didn't want to sit directly in that part. It was sitting just slightly off the side. It's a bit awkward to see. So just in there, there's a little wedge. So it sits under this one, under that one there. So it's inside these two little L-shaped parts there. And it was just slightly off to the side. So we'll have a look at that. Maybe that's something else that's just messing about. So that's our first part. And then all I'm going to do, I'm not going to put anything else in. I'll put them brushes in. Otherwise they get caught up. I'll damage one of them. I won't be happy. So all I'm going to do then is put the rest of the casing back on top. Hold it in place. And if I move it, I can hear that clicking this time. So hopefully, by the time that's clamped together properly, hopefully that's all it was. Is that circuit board had moved slightly? Probably been dropped. That's common. But that to me sounds like it's working. So if I'm happy with that, which I think I am. We might as well start getting these back together then as they're already halfway there. So the first part we needed to put there. That part goes on there. Circuit board's already in place and I know that's in a good spot. And we need to clamp this on top of there. Actual fact that it's got two little lugs on there. I can't remember which way around it was, but if them two little lugs were going to sit on there, which looks right, they will hold that circuit board down as well. So the first one's in here. Some jobs ain't too bad. Other jobs can be a pain in the bum to do them. So, tighten these up.
That looks good. That's still in place, it hasn't moved. Good. So, these little bits, common, common for me. I put all these together and then I've got to put the head on and realise I haven't put them back in. So they will sit just in there. So in that little wedge, sit down in there. They're quite a tight fit on these ones, which is unusual. They're normally really loose and that's why you lose them. As I said before, master clip. I quite like them. Other people don't. I find them really nice clippers. Just knock the camera then with the head. So, that's all good to go. Let's get the motor in. Motor itself then. So the magnetic case in here. A couple of magnets inside it. It's got a hole at one end. That hole's going to fit on that lug there. So we need to make sure that when we put it in, it fits without each side. Because it will go either way. It just means that when you come to put it together, it won't work. So that hole needs to line up with that. And then we need to put our new O-rings on here. I just spotted something rolling away then. So one's at that side. One goes to that side. And the other thing I need to do is put some oil on the blooming things. So let's quickly put some oil on. First one's going to go at this side. A little drop in there. Work it in. Second one's going to go on this side. So all I'm looking for when I turn it is where it turns and where it doesn't turn. So I know then that it's on that line there. There's no point putting it anywhere else because it won't go where I want it. And just work that in for a bit. Okay, where's my paper towel gone? There it is. Wipe off the excess. Again, you wipe the excess off because you don't really want oil floating around inside here. So we've got the hole at the right side. I'm going to take them brushes back out again because we've got to do them a bit later. So it's going to sit in there and in there. And we need to line that hole up. And it should, see where it just dropped in, just drop down into place there. A bit of pressure on it, a bit of pressure on there. If we want to test it, we have to use lots of little fingers. So one on there, one on there, one on there. And it should spin nicely, which is good going. So lose this. Lose that, don't want that, don't want that. That's to do with the tensioner. That spring that disappeared over there is to do with the tensioner. Brushes then. Got a bird walking around on the roof of my shed. So the brushes then, they're going to sit in here. And we've got a curve already on them. They're not bad, they're probably worn a fair bit, but they'll still be all right. What we're going to do is feed that spring inside, line it up on top, feed that in, hold it in, push it against the commuter ring and lock it down in place. I'm going to do the same with this one. So line it up into there, take a brush, line it around the right way, circle it on the end, push it against that commuter ring and then lock them into place. And again, what we're looking for on these ones, I'm using me round all a lot on this one, I'll have to do a leather work one eventually, is that that little pin there actually catches in anywhere else and it'll be in the wrong spot. That's too good. Don't want to turn it now because as soon as you turn it, you tend to knock them out. Get rid of that. Give me a bin pot. So we now need to put this case in on top of that. I've put them in. This is going to go onto there. And at the same time as this going on here, we've got to line these all up. This is what was keeping it held tight together was these lugs. When I was trying to pull it apart, that one's really tight on there. Ow! <laughs> Skim! <laughs> Leave the back end open a little bit. These are going to fit in, they go one way. So that's the outside. So that's the wrong side. That's the outside. Just sits into there, into there, into there. And it will go up tight. One on the other side. Got my finger over the other one. Because otherwise when I pull it apart, I'm going to put this one in. Again, they're lining up here, lining up here. And all we've got to do is clip them into place. So, that's our clipper housing together. I'm going to grip it nice and tight. 
just have a little turn make sure that motor spins looks good to me so these are all our screws they're all exactly the same so it doesn't matter i drop one into place take my screwdriver gently in as we go remember the reason i'm going gently is these are self-tapping screws into a bit of plastic so when they first built these there'd be no thread cut into that plastic there would only be a simple plastic hole that's right size for these screws so when i put it in what i don't want to do is cut a fresh thread because anytime you cut another hole it weakens that amount of plastic so quite often when you get these and they've been broke and somebody's had a look at them and then they've kind of put them back together again and what they've done is rather than just got that they've pushed that in and tightened it up and then it won't go you know sometimes i go the wrong way so there's that little click and you feel it click and drop down past them so last one there this one was tight so this one's going to be a bit different this one's probably or could be what caused some of them problems because the one at the top there is tight which means when i tighten that up it's not actually pulling it tight because it's threaded against a pair of them i've forgotten to put a bit of rope in there where did that go I knew there was something. So, let's loosen these back up again. Sometimes I make more work for myself than what I need to. Loosen these ones back off. This one back off. Loosen that front one off, if I can find it. Loosen that one off. So when I pull these apart, everything will fall out. Yeah, I spotted that hole there. Not spotted the bit of string as I put it all together. There we go. Now tighten everything back down again. Is technically without that bit of rope loop being there you could poke something metal inside there a nail or needle or something from platting and therefore you fail a pat test because the idea is is you can't get without taking these apart you can't get anything in to touch any of the electric components that are inside this can you and that's the idea of a pat test really not only about whether it's got the right fuse and things like that, is to make sure you're not going to actually accidentally go and electrocute yourself. Which is why you can't have any brakes on these cables. No um, that external sheath pulled off or anything like that. So, all them screws are done. Going to have another little listen. I can still hear that clicking hopefully we are good so i've checked all the rest motor turns i'm happy about the brushes are back in all we've got to do is fit the head so i'm not going to do that at the moment what i'm going to do is plug these in excuse me i turned off at the moment at the wall which is good that's on a zero which should be off that's on there fingers crossed oh look at that have a little play with the cable oh before i get carried away switch it off unplug it try not to do things with it being plugged in because you guarantee you're going to knock a switch and turn it back on so that is a functional test again another part of a pat test see if i can't get rid of that last little bit of greasy bit that's sitting on there put my pat test label over the top of that and you won't see it that is pretty good going so we've got all of this done this is all free to go let's put some oil in here then so we've got two lots of oil we've got one that goes in there and another one that's right at the back of that these are hydraulically pressed in place so you can't really get into them i'm just going to work that in 
And I can still feel that's a little bit rough, but I think it'll free up as it goes on. Work that round. The other place we got we can put a bit of oil on is this bearing here, so which is a blade bearing. And I'll just squid a little drip into that. Work that in there. Sometimes some of these, these are rubber bungs, so you can pull these out and you can get to that. But this one doesn't want to come out, and I'm not going to pull it because it'll break it. Other times you might have a little hole at the top here. So this one here is designed to go into the top of the blades. But sometimes you get another one that goes right into it. Again, this part here, I'm not going to put any grease or anything on there. It's nylon brush onto metal, so it doesn't need any anyway. But the air blows straight through there. And if I filled that with grease, it would just bung it up in no time at all. The way this is going to go on then, that is the top, isn't it? Where you switch where your thumb is. You can just simply go onto there. This is like an oval shape as well, so it can only go one way. So once you line it up, push it in place, and drop our two screws down it whoop, down inside. Now, one of the things, again for me, per favourites, if you're going to get a set of master clips, opt for the list ahead. I much further list ahead to the Heinegger head that they do. Heinegger one looks nice, it's got lots of the way them blades work on it work really well. They're good for their tension. I can't get blooming screw in there, screwdriver in to get the screw heads off, to get the head off. So master clip horse clippers, tensioner. Blades going off to be sharp, and I'm gonna wander up the road in a minute and do them. So blades to be sharpened, nicely repaired. Uh, at the moment, I'm still charging £30 for repairs, plus parts. Um, this didn't need any parts, so it's just going to be the £30 for them. But if you've got a set of horse clippers that need servicing or repairing, uh, give us a shout. Uh, my website address is oaksidesaddlery.co.uk. Uh, otherwise, you can send me an email at oaksidesaddlery at gmail.com or leave a comment in below. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, things like that as well, so if you like what I do hit that like button hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channels here uh, and hopefully I'll speak to you all again very not too long future have a good day and goodbye